Hello everybody and welcome to our class video about finding a missing dimension and rearranging surface area and volume equations. Wow, that's a mouthful. Our learning goals are that you'll be able to calculate an unknown dimension if you know the surface area or the volume, and that you'll be able to sol solve a formula for a specific variable. Okay, so let's look at an example. In our first example, we'll be finding a missing dimension. So, the problem says, the volume of a cone is 256 pi inches cubed. If it has a radius of 8 inches, what is its height? So, the height is missing. Oh dear, how shall we find it? We'll need to be like geometry detectives or something. Well, okay, you know that's not exactly what we mean by find it. Like, it's not playing hide and seek or something, but we need to solve for the height. Okay, so how will we solve for the height? Elementary, my dear Watson, purely elementary. To find an unknown dimension, you need to first plug in what you know, and then solve for what you don't. Okay, so in order to plug it in, we need to have something to plug it in to, so let's write the formula. The formula for the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. Okay, now we'll plug in what we know. In the problem statement, we were given the volume, that's, so that's V, the 256 pi, and we were also given the radius, which is R. So I can put those into the equation. So I'll change the V into a 256 pi. The 1 third and the pi stay the same. The R is 8, so I'll put 8 squared, and then h is what we're solving for. Okay, now we need to solve that equation for what we don't know, which is h. In other words, we need to get h by itself. How will we do that? We'll need to undo operations, just like when we solve any other equation, like when solving for x. Okay, so the first thing we'll undo is the one-third. Now, multiplying by a third is the same as dividing by three, so how would we undo dividing by three? Well, by multiplying by three. So I'll multiply by three on the right side, but if I do it to one side, I also have to do it to the other. Okay, the one third and the three will cancel on the right side. So on the left, I'll have 768 pi, then the rest of it will remain the same because the one-third and the three canceled. Notice I also changed the eight squared into 64 while I'm at it. Okay, so next in line is pi. How will I get rid of the pi? Well, all of those terms are multiplied here. It's pi times 64 times h. So how do I undo multiplying by pi? Well, I divide by pi. So, let's divide by pi on both sides. Now, on the right-hand side, since we have a pi on top and bottom, they cancel. That's the whole point of dividing by pi. But notice also on the left side, there's a pi on top and on bottom. Okay, so those pi's will cancel as well. So now I'd be left with 768 equals 64h. Now, make sure that you remember to put the pi when you originally plug in. A lot of people forget to do that and then you'll end up with an answer that is significantly different. Okay, the last thing we need to remove is the 64. Since it's 64 times h, the opposite of multiplication is division. So again, I will be dividing both sides. So we'll divide both sides by 64. 64's will cancel and that will give me h equals 12. Ah. And don't forget your units. That would be 12 inches. All right, so we found the height. Woohoo! In this second example, we'll be rearranging one of our surface area or volume formulas to be solved for a specific variable. The question is asking us to solve the formula for the total surface area of a pyramid for the slant height. Okay, that may have just sounded like I told you to do a bunch of gibberish. Um, so let's let me help you piece it together. So, we're looking at the formula for the total surface area of a pyramid. Okay, so we can look that up. That is surface area equals one-half perimeter of the base 
times slant height plus the area of the base. Okay, this word solve at the front of the sentence, that means to get a variable by itself. It's more than just to get the answer to a question. When you see the word solve in math, it means that you're going to get a variable by itself. Okay, what variable are we getting by itself? Well, it says we're going to solve for the slant height, so that must mean the slant height is what we are getting by itself. That would be the letter L. Okay, now how are we going to go about getting that variable by itself? Well, it's going to be by undoing operations. Brilliant deduction, my dear Watson. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Okay, so if we're going to undo some operations, what one will we undo first? Well, consider this just generic equation that I just made up off the top of my head, 12 equals 2x plus 4. In this equation, we would get rid of the 4 first. Okay? So, just based off of that example, in general, we undo addition or subtraction first. That is, unless there are parentheses involved, which would mean it's a totally different story, but we don't have to worry about that here, so we're fine. All right, so how would I undo adding the area of the base? Well, I would subtract it. So I'm going to do minus b on both sides of the equation. So on the left side, I have surface area minus b. On the right side, I'd have 1 half pl, because adding and subtracting b is going to cancel. Okay, how about undoing then the one-half? Well, the opposite of multiplying by a half, which dividing by two, okay, would be to multiply by two. So if I multiply by two on that side, I'll need to also multiply by two on the other side. Then on the right side, the one-half and the times two are going to cancel. All right. Specifically here, because I need to multiply the entire left side by 2, that means I need to put parentheses around the surface area minus b because I'm multipl that shows that I'm multiplying all of it. Okay, I could distribute the 2 if I want, but eh, who cares? Alright, so on the left side I've got 2 times quantity surface area minus b. And on the right side, I have PL. Remember, we need to get L by itself, so that means I need to get rid of P. Oops, that was my computer. Just ignore that. All right, so to get rid of multiplying by P, I need to divide by P. But I also have to do that on the other side. Okay, the P's on the left or the right side will cancel. And then we have L equals. Yay, we're almost done. On the left side, I just need to write down what we had before. There. So L is equal to 2 times quantity surface area minus the area of the base, all divided by the perimeter of the base. Wow. OK, that was one of the more difficult ones. Most of them are a little easier than that. All right, so hope that all makes sense. And now you are a geometry super sleuth. All right, see you guys later.